Hello, welcome back to African Lectures. My name is African Professor One. If this is the first time you come into this platform, please subscribe and share with friends and family. Talk to them, recommend to them, let them know how informative this is. It's freestyle. I talk about a range of issues in one segment and I don't edit anything when I've, it's done, it's done. Because my motto is if you're talking about the truth, if you're talking about the truth, you don't need to look over your shoulders. You don't need to embellish, over-dramatize anything. When, you, when it's done, when I finish, I finish. And uh, I don't edit anything. I put it, you know, out there. That's what I want and that's what it is. Because you, I'm not going to give you anything but the truth. That's exactly what I do. And, you know, right here uh, on African Lectures Forum. Once again, my name is African Professor One. So today's discussion will be focused on one country in Africa. But before I start, I want to ask you a question before I introduce my topic. If I were to ask any of my viewers, any of my listeners, that which country in Africa today you think is the most racist country in Africa, which one would you say? I'm not going to give you any clue, but I just want to, what do you think? If I were to ask you today, which today, I'm not talking about the previous I'm talking about today, not the past, today, right now. If I were to ask you, which country is the most racist country in Africa today, which one would you say? Well, let me help you out. The answer is Tunisia, in the northern part of Africa. So the topic today is, Tunisia is the most racist country in Africa today. Let me repeat. Tunisia is the most racist country in Africa today. Why am I saying that? You have a whole bunch of press, a whole president, a whole goddamn president who in somewhere in February of this year, he made his name. I don't know. I don't, and I don't even care if I know how to pronounce his name or not. I think it's, it's, it's said, the name is uh, Kayash Sa'i, President Kayash Sa'i. And so in February, he addressed his country, Tunisians, and in a statement, in an in address, he made an outlandish statement to the effect that there's a lot of people, a lot of immigrants from the other part of Africa, the sub-Saharan Africa, all those countries below south of the Sahara, the largest desert in the world, Sahara Desert, all the countries located below the Sahara Desert. Like I said, it's about, there are about 49 countries. More predominantly, they are black, dark skinny people. And so those black people from other part of Africa are coming to his country. He was telling his people to watch out that there's a, a lot of black people coming to his country, Tunisia, with a plan to change the demographic makeup of Tunisia and turn that country into just another African country that does not belong to Arab and Muslim people. Can you believe it? Can you, can you believe it? That is what the president said. The president of Tunisia, the current president of Tunisia, in February of this year, he made a, a stupid statement, you know, myopic statement, you know, that racist statement that some people, some dark skinny people, black people from other part of Africa, the sub-Saharan Africa, they are coming into his country as immigrants with a purpose of coming to, or a plan to come to change the demographic makeup of the country of Tunisia and turn it into or change it into just another African country that does not belong to Arab and Muslim people. You can you guys can Google and, and find out that who said that. Think about it. And now I, I was sitting there when I heard that I'm like whoa 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 and this is an African leader in an African continent saying what he's saying. Why? Because he look at his skin with a skin tone like you know, kind of fair complexion or whatever you call that color, Arab cat color. And so because of that, he think he's better than anybody with a darker complexion. And so they are coming into his country to change his country because they are not Arab and they are not Muslims. That's a first class, first class. That's discriminatory statement of the highest order. And he said, and I said, I asked myself, when I heard this, I know I heard, when I heard, I asked myself, if any of the African, if any of the European leaders 
any of the white European leaders or American leader or any of the European leaders, Spain, Germany, Italy, Britain, Canada, wherever the United States, have made that statement that blacks are coming to their country to change the demographic and turn it into that kind of, and they are thieves, this and that and that, they are criminals. Well, what do you think other leaders, the civil rights leaders or other leaders will say about that statement? I bet you, you know what it, we tell you, why people are this, why people, but this is Arab, Arab leader. With that kind of color, I don't even know how to describe it. I don't know what they call themselves. That color, I don't know what they call themselves. But he is saying that what he said. And I know, I don't even know the response of African Union. Even if they made any response, it would be immediate. It can be that hard. It can be that forceful that if a white leader has said that, any of the European nations have said that. And I said to myself, man, I, I don't know. So when I see a lot of people struggling to go to Libya, to go to North Africa, to go, I say, why? What is it that, that they don't want to go? Because those people over there, they are more, they discriminate more than, you know, you can imagine. They, those people, the Arab Muslim, the five, five or six Arab countries, I think five, Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, Algeria, and Libya. They, those five countries in the north, part the Arab countries, in Africa, they think somehow they better, they don't even belong to Africa. They don't even see themselves as African. They look down on those country, people or those yeah people, inhabitants below the south of Sahara, the south Sahara African countries. And that is why the way they behave, the way they interact with black people in Africa, it tells a lot. It just tells a lot. But a lot of these African leaders, they just don't want to talk about it. The only thing they want to talk about it is uh, white racism or whatever. I'm not, it's everywhere, especially those those Arab countries in Africa. They do that, at least one of the leaders. And it's, it's, it's emblematic. You know, what the guy said, even though you don't hear any of other countries, any other Arab countries saying that, but down deep in their heart, they share the same sentiment that somehow black people from the sub-Saharan Africa is coming over there to, you know, bring their culture and that kind of whatever, you know, mindset or whatever they have, behavior, practice, where, uh, bring it over there. They don't want to see that. That is why you see a lot of black people going to Libya, going through the desert. They get killed. They just, they are subject to all kind of atrocious uh, practices or behavior towards them by those countries in the northern part of Africa. And still, you see these people going there, Nigerians, Af uh, Guyanians, Liberians, wherever, Mali, they are all trying to go there. To, and still, these people don't want you guys over there. And still, you guys go there. I don't even know what it is. So my thing is, that is why when I hear people talking about racism or whatever, even within Africa, some of these black African countries, of all countries, some of these countries, even there's no unity within those most of these countries. But we don't want to tell the truth. The truth is one. So when I hear people talking about the concept of unity, African unity, we will one day unite to become United States of Africa. That's a bull crap. That's a bull crap. It will never happen. You already know that there's no way Africa will never unite. Because if you look at the kind of differences among Africa in terms of culture, in terms of tradition, in terms of language and language barriers and all kinds of, it's so vast. And so the chasm, there's a veritable chasm, you know, among these African societies. And so any talk about unity, African unity, and well, it's an illusion. It's just something people say to make them feel good about themselves, to make them feel good that they are making an effort towards unity. But they know in reality, it's not going to happen. Because look at, like I said, look at the whole country. One African country, Tunisia, president, make that statement. And guess what? Ever since the guy made that statement in February of this year, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, evidence or there's a lot of uh, reports of discriminatory activities or practices towards immigrant, immigrant, black immigrants living in Tunisia. Because if you look at Tunisia today, Tunisia population-wise is between 12 million and 13 million. 
and out of that uh, population, we say about 12 to 13 million, about 10 percent to 15 percent are they, they're black, it's solid black, you know, because through the slavery and other immigrant immigration activities, you find some group of people who are native black or citizen who are black in and guess what they're going through a lot of hair as far as discriminatory practices it's already there even before that president make that statement you know when you go to the north africa over there there's those discriminatory practices and that's racist tendencies or you know towards the darker skin complacent people over there anyway so when the president said that it give the people of tunisia impetus it give them encouragement to keep on or to now do it openly racist you know um behavior openly towards because the police will be looking the other way why the tunisians are doing what they do because guess what the whole president of that republic support that bull crap and that is what it is so that's the conversation i want to have for you i said today if you were to ask me or if you want to know from me or if you want to know the most racist country in africa today is tunisia and if don't don't take my word for it go and ask their current president what he said about black people coming into his country and that will tell you that will give you an idea why i said what i said so today that's the topic i have for you and one more time this is african lectures and my name is african professor one so if you have any relative or friends or whatever who want to go even even black americans or whatever if you want to go and visit tunisia please don't go and spend your money over there because guess what they don't they, if you are once you are that complacent they don't look at you and you are not a muslim and arab they look at you as somehow you are inferior and you don't belong into that country because you are coming over there to change the demographic makeup of that country that is what it is so tell your friends and families and everybody about tunisia all black people you can watch your back don't go to that crazy country it's not even worth it you know so one more time this is african lectures and my name is africa professor one subscribe and share spread recommend to everybody and i'll talk to you another time have a great day